we did a huge business, huge, and, I, and they paid me well. So they, next time I was there, they called me, the next time I was going on, and said, we're gonna go to San Domingo. Nick came in and about this guy Jack, named Jack Fernando. So, man, I took off on him, you know, San Domingo, who are you, I'm Ric Flair, woo, woo, woo. Jack Fernando, a little punk kid, you know, he wouldn't even make it in the streets here. Whatever I did, I was doing my shit. But um, my favorite line would be, like, doing Island, if you don't like me, I don't like you. I'm just coming to make your life better. Stuff like that. <laughs> like, but they, back then, they took this shit, like, real serious. So, we go, to, and I'm going back to San Domingo this time, because I can't think of the name of that place. God, oh, Trinidad. Trinidad's where I had the big one. Let's go to Trinidad first. So the first place, Trinidad, um, they would fly down on a Sunday, right? And I'd come through the customs with everybody. You, over here, they put me in a room for three hours. I sat there and the guy said, why don't you like Trinidad? I said, I like Trinidad. I said, I've never been here, but I'm sure I'll like it. You said, they played my interview. You said, you don't like Trinidad, why, why are you here? And I go, I'm here because I'm wrestling here tonight. So anyway, unbeknownst to me, they left me there. Sent a car back, they had sold 20,000 tickets for a 6,000 seat outdoor stadium called the Jean-Pierre Complex. I get there and it's me and Jovica for an hour. So they want to do the dusty finish, right? Drop back at the end, right? One, two, three, right at the hour mark. Full scale riot. Horses knocked down, the cops knocked off the horses. The only two guys that came out and got me out of the dressing room were Dory Funk Jr. and uh, Moondog. Not Randy Colley, the other one. Um, and Colley came too and got me back to the dressing room. It was insanity. Another one, and I left the belt there that night too. And uh, we got back, and I go, Jesus Christ, you guys, what are we doing here? I'm not doing this anymore. You know, this is having a good time, but not that good a time. And, and, play, and turning that. Trend that sucks anyway, I'm saying it to you. In case you want to buy this down there. It's not, it ain't all it's cracked up to be. I know I'm never going back to see you guys now ever, but <laughs> that holiday and sucked. It was hot. So the next day I was on the plane, I'm getting the same thing. I'm never, they're not going to on the plane. So this trip searched me and everything, right? But that finally let me go. And I said, oh, I got home, oh, God, I'm never doing this again. So sure enough, they wanted to go back and go to the 30,000 seat soccer stadium. We wrestled the week again with him with the belt. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I said, okay. So they gave me like five grand to come. So we went down there and did, we did 30,000 people. So I, I, went, I did about five shows there. Then I wrestled Brody and we sold out huge. And just got so wild. I said, guys, I just not don't want to do this gig anymore. Now. That was nothing compared to San Domingo. He just brought that up. San Domingo. I get to the airport, make all the interviews again with Jack Mano. I get to the airport. The girl goes, where's your passport? I said, I haven't got a passport. I didn't know to bring one. I didn't know I was leaving here. They didn't tell me I was needed a passport. And I always carried it, but I didn't need it to go there. I didn't need a passport to go down to the islands back then. Mm -hmm. San Domingo, I need a passport. You know this story? Uh, I, I, just from what you told in your book. Yeah, well, I got... I, I get to the gate and they go, oh, you can't go. And I go, Phew. I don't want to go anyway. I had a feeling something was big was going on here, but they weren't telling me about it. They gave the chick 500 bucks, US. I got on the plane, like a dumb shit. I got on the plane and went. Eastern Alliance, we land, get off. He's taking me to the Sheridan Hotel. I'm with George Napolitano. I asked George the story. We're standing on top, looking out the window of the room. Here's this guy this big running across the bridge. There's 30,000 people, guys. I'm not lying. You couldn't see the line. This guy's training for this match with me that night. It's this big, Jack Fernando. He goes, George, someone tells me this is gonna be good. We get there again, right? They're tipping over, they're tipping over a taxi cab. Oh, they tipped over my cab going to Trinidad, by the way. Tipped over my cab. Wow. Yeah, I didn't go back, I didn't go back the next time I was like, brought Beth with me. <laughs> Poor Beth has seen it all, so. <laughs> so I'm gonna die, I'm gonna have my wife with me. So Trinidad, I mean, just San Domingo, they've sold, who God only knows for a 10,000 state building. It was insanity. Had a riot before we got in the building, a riot, getting ready to go. They played this guy's music. He didn't understand a word of English. It's me and Jose Gonzalez and him talking about the match. There's nothing to talk about. He doesn't understand a word of English. If he does, he's playing dumb. So, back then, 
you wasn't in very good shape. So to them, a draw was 30 minutes, thank God. What is the easiest 30 minutes? There. The guy was 150 pounds he was at. But every time he hit me, ah, boom, ah, boom. And so I just fly made him a couple of times, stomped a couple of holes in him, you know, grab, grab a hold on him. Then I grabbed a hold on him. Oh, 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 Jack, Jack, you know, Jack. So <laughs> all I could tell you, I'd say, hit me, hit me. And they, every time he took a bump, he's got up. I could hit it for 30 minutes. And he, but, but the crowd was insanity. His finish was a sleeper, right? So now it's going to be five seconds, four, three, arm down, the bell rings, right? Not a chance. Full scale riot. The referee's trying to give me the belt. I said, I don't want it. Don't hand it to me again, motherfucker. <laughs> I want to go with the dressing room. It was a hot potato, but I was getting a shit beat out of me. I'm terrible. And that Jose came out and helped me get out of there and back in the dressing room. I just stayed in the dressing room for three hours after the show. They tore the building down. Hmm. Now, of course, you give them back your victory Carlos, you gotta come back, gotta come back. And I go, I can't. So they pay me 10 grand to come back with a lot of money. I understood under one condition. I need to bring somebody with me. Guess who I brought with me? Roddy. Roddy Piper. <laughs> so he was in between jobs. So Rick decides, yeah, hey, you want to come with me, you know, because I can't work in the United States. And he brings me to Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo is a country that's run by martial law. And so basically, from the way I understood it, the way you become a general is by the more people you can control. Ah, there we go. What we've been told is, as we're coming in here, uh, that the guy, I think his name was Jack Benitez, or something like that. What he did to train for this big fight for the world champion Ric Flair coming was he ran across the bridge like the whole country turned out. This is what we heard. So we get there, you know, Roddy's, Roddy was hurting his back was bad. So some guy is sticking a needle in Roddy this big. Roddy, what the hell are you doing? And they're medicating Roddy with some kind of foreign pain medicine. I was scared to death. I don't mind telling you, me and Roddy looking around the locker room with 20 guys, all of them looking at us like, we want to kill you, <laughs> you two white son of a bitches. I want to kill myself for being there, so I want to kill Time to go. We come down places, you know, as all old timers will tell you, hanging from the rafters. Now, the, the president's son is in the crowd, and on one side and the other side are two guys with just swirls on their hats. The army was the ones that escorted us down. They had sticks about a oh, foot long with maybe a three inch chain on the end of it. And they're escorting us down. But now they come in, they want Roddy, this guy, when he went to the ring the first time, they're, they're doing a certain ceremony, it's their, their national anthem, their print flag, and Roddy goes, I'll carry the flag, what the hell? So the finish was, da da da, and Roddy trips him, right? And so, you know, woo, here we go. And so the match starts going, bing, 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 and the people are up. And Rick looks at me and says, you know, I mean, we're working with a smurf here. He says, pull the leg. Me being, you know, the straight up man I am, bah, you know, boom, it goes down. Holy shit, man. The little kid starts crying. The two guys with the swirlies get up and start packing their pistols. You remember, remember them guys with the sticks and the chains? They're no longer on our side. I cover them one, two, three. We got securities, no problem. Fix, fix, no problem. Roddy tripped him, he had two guns in his head. Two guns. I'm not bullshitting you guys. From the hired security. No, this is this, this. It's a military-run country. But this is two guns from police that are into the show again and not doing their job because they're fans. You know, I mean, it was that crazy. Veneno Ven Ven was over that strong. There's only one white man on the floor, me. And here they come with these sticks and chains. And I learned, you know, first thing you want to do in a riot is get a chair, not to hit somebody with it. Get it over your head. You know, and. and Rick, Rick was trying to keep the high ground there, and uh, I was kind of keeping the low ground, and uh, Jose Gonzalez was the guy that got down the aisle, and we got back, and it, it was so hot in that country, they didn't have windows, they just had awnings, and it was just big chunks of cement, and when we got back, the wrestlers there had stolen, uh, they had stolen my wedding ring, a watch, uh, some other stuff, and some stuff from Rick, and now uh, it's like two o'clock in the morning. They're still rioting outside. They're throwing these big hunks of concrete through the awnings. We're tucked in a corner. And Flair's got the balls to look at me and go, 
Don Perignon pipe? <laughs> no, I'm going to kill you, you mother... So I left the belt again. <laughs> we get back to the restroom, room, back to their office, and they took me and Roddy to a couple of really hot clubs. We had a good time. But it was two days before Christmas, and Roddy and I got so drunk. We, we, you know, just lucky to be alive drunk, you know, and we drank all night there, got on a plane, flew to Miami. We saw the Briscoes come back and we tackled them in the airport, wrestled with them, the security had us down in Miami. Rod and I got in the plane, and the pilot was going to land the plane in Atlanta. We were making so much noise in the back of the plane with the flight attendants and everything. Telling you, old Roddy was singing Jingle Bells, the whole plane singing Jingle Bells. So, you know, back to you, could, you, you, you couldn't give, you couldn't say anything that would cause a problem with flight attendants. But you could argue you'd have just a good time. But, you know, the captain came back and goes, hey guys, I have one more complaint. I'm going to land a plane in Atlanta. But, you know, what Roddy's going, what are you going to land a plane in Atlanta for? We don't want to stay in Atlanta. I mean, you know, Roddy was giving him crap. But you could do that back then. Now you'd be, you know, locked up in San Quentin. So we landed in Charlotte, and our wives were there, and we got off. We hadn't been to bed in two days. And that's how we started our Christmas break, which was two days. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, I didn't go back to San Domingo. There was no, not enough money to ever get me to go back. So Jack Fernando beat me twice. <laughs> that brings the title reign to 22. <laughs> <laughs>